not going to be talking about investment from, the tradi from a traditional form of investment from what you've just heard now, um, but I'm going to be talking about it from a sustainability angle. We all are aware of global warming, the melting of the North Pole, the ice sheets that deflect the sun and the heat back. Um, we are aware of global catastrophes, of tsunamis, of rising sea levels. Um, and we also are aware, I believe, that our economic system operates within a broader sort of ecosystem. In the past, we've always believed that everything is subordinate to the economic system. Um, but I, say, I believe that there's a growing acceptance worldwide that it's the other way around. We also are aware that there are at least 4 billion people excluded from the economic system um, who live on less than one US dollar a day. Um, we're aware of global poverty, um, which is a risk, a security risk to society, but also a business risk. Um, it affects the security of states and the risk of business, especially operating in Africa. And I'll give some examples just now around that. Sustainability, as we know, is broken up into three areas. Um, the one is the environmental side, dealing with air, water, land, and land use ecosystems. Um, the other side is the economic sustainability side, which is what I'm going to be talking today about a bit more. But there's also the social side, which is people. Um, inside the, the business corporate community, on the social side, we would have labor. Um, on the external stakeholders around that, would be civil society, community, governments, but also local businesses in Africa. And the economic sustainability, when we talk about this, um, especially in the sustainability reporting of companies, often it's around the sustainability of the particular corporation, um, which is important. But we believe that, that it can't be business as usual, given the facts that I've just given about global poverty, exclusion from the economic system, that when South African businesses, or Chinese or Indian, but especially South African, expand into Africa, that one of the aims should be to develop, to look at how South African business can, can contribute to evenly developed economies. Um, I'm aware of studies that we've done in the Benchmarks Foundation, so on ShopRite Checkers expansion into a number of countries, and we've looked at the economic sort of impacts, um, positive and negative, and when we looked at ShopRite Checkers in Zambia, we noted that when ShopRite expanded into Zambia, that the state-owned stores that previously supplied produce and products um, to, to Zambians went out of business. Um, they employed 2,100 people. <coughs> ShopRite created 2,250 jobs, um, of which most were part-time. I'm also aware that there's been a lot of resistance to some of South African retail operations and supermarkets, um, where where local producers feel that they've lost their market share, um, where local farmers feel um, that they've lost access to their market, um, and, and in one case where a ShopRite store was burned down. So when South African business expands onto the continent, there are a number of questions that need to, to be addressed. Um, and one of the questions is, how can business contribute to the broader good of society and not just profit maximization? How can business have responsible sort of economic practices, economic sustainability practices, backed by clear policy? Um, when I 
go to that example of ShopRite, part of the problem there is a social license to operate, and this forms part of the economic sustainability debate. Uh, social license to operate is not just a piece of paper from government. Um, it's broader than that. It involves broader interest groups. It involves, in the area of, of retail, it involves local business interests. Um, so, for the Benchmarks Foundation, economic sustainability is about developing sustainable markets in these economies that the African companies expand into. And it's growing those markets uh, through building local capacity that stimulates the local market development. Um, otherwise, in a sense, it can be short-sighted to, to operate on a short-term sort of profit maximization basis without trying to stimulate that local economy. <laughs> I'm aware as well, within the case of ShopRite, that they would argue that the local economy doesn't have the skills and the capacity to provide them um, with the, the kind of fresh produce, for example, or other projects or other products that meet their quality control and standards. Um, but we believe that, that if South African companies are operating elsewhere, that they need to start to address this, um, these kind of issues. So not only will it benefit their own business, but it will start to contribute to the economic development of that country. In order to do this, um, one of the big issues is sourcing locally. Um, we know, for example, with ShopRite again, that 60% of the goods on Zambian stores come, are flown in from South Africa. If we look at the environmental side of that, then we're looking at quite uh, a high carbon footprint. We also know that if cap capacity building took place in these local economies, not only by, by say, uh, ShopRite as the example that I'm using, but in conjunction with government, um, that uh, one could increase local sourcing um, and local suppliers and start to capacitate them to the advantage of the company. Um, late last year, MassMart spoke to the Benchmarks Foundation around uh, sustainability and said to us, what should we be doing when we go into countries? Um, we said, first of all, we think you should be doing a social and economic impact assessment. You should look at how you're going to impact on that local economy. Who are the local businesses that are going to be affected um, by, your, by you setting up your business in, in that host economy? Um, and if you're dealing, for example, in white goods, fridges, television sets, whatever, how can you capacitate those local stores to become units of your bigger store? How do you start to empower local businesses and give them an interest instead of having um, a big reaction like ShopRite has had in Zambia? And I'm aware of that in many other countries where there's a lot of resilience to South African companies. Yes. Consumers like flocking into the stores, but it's the local businesses, the local producers, the local farmers um, that are impacted upon negatively. Um, and this needs to be taken into account. In the examples of, of, of ShopRite, again, the question would be, how do you start to develop um, a local or centralized produce market um, to assist in that development? Um, how do you, if you've got, if you've got um, buying and sourcing policies that are centralized in one area, how do you decentralize that to help and assist local suppliers to be, become integrated into your business? How do you train people in quality control and sourcing standards? Um, so we believe that that these areas are very important, that local farmers, local producers have to be capacitated, that South African companies have a responsibility not only to extract profit, um, but to add value. Um, many companies talk about the African Renaissance, they say we're expanding into Africa, um, 
and using the words of, of, of Tabo and Becky's African Renaissance plan and talking about development, but we don't see that taking place. So we believe that the, the starting point is to do an economic and social impact assessment before starting operations and then continue that during operations. And by doing that properly, one starts to gain a social license to operate. Otherwise, South African businesses stand the risk um, of resistance from the local population. And lastly, the issue that I want to raise is also there's a lot of expectations in these countries when South African business comes in that life is going to be better, that we are going to benefit. Um, one of the issues is wages. Um, people cry out about the low wages that they are paid that are measured according to the economy that they're in. Um, often these wages are subsistence wages, just enough to get people to work. Um, but by increasing wages and paying better wages also increases demand and starts to stimulate the local economy um, and starts to stimulate local buying power, which will come back to a lot of the, the, the stores that South Africa um, builds in these host countries. Um, I've spoken today about retail, but the Benchmarks Foundation also has a very big focus on mining um, within the SADC region. Um, and we look at mining from this perspective as well, and we look at how mining can be done better and how mining can benefit um, the local economies. Um, and we benchmark these studies through a document called Principles for Global Corporate Responsibility, Benchmarks for Measuring Business Performance. Um, and this is one of the studies that we've done on ShopRite in three countries. Um, these are some of the other studies that we produce called the Policy Gap Series um, that deal with the three areas of sustainability. Um, this one is on platinum mining in Limpopo. Um, and we've done studies on diamonds in South Africa, in Botswana. We've done work on mining in the DRC. Um, in Zambia, in Malawi, um, and, uh, and Tanzania. And so I, I would urge that when we start looking at investment, that we start looking at these economic sustainability issues and how we can start capacitating the host economies and start to build and increase the market share in those countries.